Do not swim in the water. That is not what a towing tank is for. It may look like a swimming pool, but towing tanks have a different purpose. The deceptively simple act of towing models of ships down a pool of water did amazing things. It propelled the science of ship design forward. From those experiments, we obtained extremely accurate and precise measurements to reveal the bountiful world of ship hydrodynamics. Today, we discuss a central tool in the field of ship design, the towing tank. Towing tanks are experimental facilities used to test models of ships. The basic idea is that you have a pool of water, you have a model of a ship, you tow the model down the pool of water with some sort of towing mechanism, and you measure the force on the model during this process. Now, that sounds simple. The catch is that during this whole process, it's a very finely controlled process. You're doing very precise and accurate measurements the whole time. The beginning of the towing tank starts back in history. William Froude argued for the very first towing tank to predict ship resistance back in 1870. Now back then, it was much easier to move the model than to move the water. And even with modern technology, it still takes less power to move the model than to move the water. And the physics are still more accurate when we do it this way. But if we want to run a ship model down a trough of water, we are going to need a very large trough of water. If I just say a pool of water, you're probably imagining a swimming pool, and I don't think you really grasp the scale of what we're saying here. So start by imagining a swimming pool, and now scale that up to a giant basin of water, several hundred meters long, deeper than a person, and wide as a car. Next thing you do is you place that basin inside a climate-controlled building. We need this because the experiments that we're running are so sensitive that even a 0.3 degree change in the water temperature affects our readings. So we need to keep that water at a constant temperature. Next, add the towing carriage. This is no small item. It stretches across the entire tank from one side to the next, and it's a large movable platform. Think of it as a moving laboratory that runs on rails. We tow the ship models from the middle of the carriage, but the scientists also ride on the carriage. All the sensors to record the equipment feed from the computers mounted on the carriage, and these are no ordinary sensors. All of the equipment in the towing tank is focused on one goal and doing it very, very, very well, obtaining accurate measurements from the ship model as we tow it down that basin of water. Okay, hey, we got measurements, whoop de doo Yeah, I mean, what do these measurements accomplish? Well, towing tanks provide a tool for solving hydrodynamic problems via experimental methods. Simply put, it's very difficult to get accurate answers for hydrodynamic problems. They don't make for very easy theories or very easy mathematics. You can't just solve them on a chalkboard. We have several different approximations, but they're approximations. And when you need accurate, reliable numbers, nothing beats the good old towing tank. And it gets better, actually. A single towing tank solves multiple types of hydrodynamic problems with extreme accuracy and precision. And the reason I keep saying accuracy and precision is because I'm actually using them in their technical scientific meaning. That is what you pay for when you go to a towing tank, the confidence that comes from scientific testing. So let's talk about these tests that you can get out of a towing tank. Today, I'm going to just talk about the three standard tests that you would do for a run-of-the-mill powering prediction for your ship. That would be a combination of three different tests, your calm water resistance, your open propeller analysis, and your self-propulsion test. Combine all of those three together, and you're going to get a good solid prediction of your ship power. So the most common test that you'll see is your basic calm water resistance test. Ships use this to determine the resistance required at their design speed. The model gets towed down the tank at several specified speeds, and then the scientists record the force on the model for each speed. 
Now you add in some special math to scale up the model results to full scale, and you have an accurate prediction of the resistance at each speed. This test can be one of the most critical because ship construction contracts include major penalties if the ship does not make its specified speed. Even losing 0.5 knots may incur penalties of $100,000 or more. So we need to ensure that that predicted speed is undisputed. You know, if some engineer says that the ship will do 14 knots and it comes out of the shipyard and the ship only does 13 knots, well, the shipyard is going to turn around and say, well, how do you know it was predicted at 14 knots? Who said that? Who, you know, how can I trust that prediction? If lawyers are getting involved, the last thing we want is people questioning the science. So instead of having just some engineer in an office predicting it, everybody agrees that the prediction is based upon a towing tank test. And that's where that really value comes in, is the towing tank provides an undisputed prediction it is the reference prediction that the shipyard will compare against the final ship. A typical test program for a calm water resistance test would require towing the model at at least five speeds. Um, it could be more depending on how many you want to pay for and a minimum of two drafts. So you're looking at at least 10 runs in total. Now the first draft is the ship's design draft where it will eventually operate when fully loaded with cargo and fuel. But just out of the shipyard on sea trials, most ships do not operate at their design draft. The shipyard doesn't want to buy enough cargo and fuel to load the ship down to its design draft. Cargo and fuel are expensive. So instead, the towing tank also tests at a second draft. This is the sea trial draft. And the deal is that if the ship matches the predictions at the sea trial draft, then it should also match the predictions in the design condition. And that's why you test at two separate drafts. Next up is the open water propeller test. The calm water resistance test only covered resistance. It only tells you how much the ship drags through the water. It doesn't cover the propeller. It doesn't tell you the efficiency losses of the propeller. So now we have to start addressing that. This is where the open water propeller test comes in. If you want to test a new propeller, this is what you're going to do. Oftentimes you'll do this even if it's a conventional propeller that there should already be standard data for. You'll still do an open water propeller test just to have consistency of model data within the towing tank. But either way, you're going to need flowing water to test the model propeller. Propellers don't technically require a towing tank to do an open water propeller test. Uh, there are purpose-built facilities for testing propellers, but towing tanks can pull double duty, and they can test propellers as well. Instead of towing a model ship, we place the propeller on a strut beneath the model carriage. The strut has a motor inside with a dynamometer installed to measure the torque and the RPM on the propeller. That allows us to rotate the propeller at a set RPM and measure everything that's going on at the same time. We set the carriage moving down the water at a fixed speed and set the propeller rotating at a fixed speed as well. As the carriage moves down the tank, we spin the propeller at specific speeds to carefully simulate different combinations of propeller loads and ship speeds. This allows the designers to test their propeller and get a clear picture of the performance before we place it behind the ship. And the idea is, is if you do this in multiple different combinations, you're going to eventually build up a full curve of propeller performance across the whole variety of possible conditions. The one thing to remember is that this is an open water propeller test. There's no ship involved at all. We're getting the performance of the propeller independent of the ship. That's because the self-propulsion test is where we combine the propeller and the ship together. You see, the behavior of a propeller changes slightly behind the ship. And at this level of accuracy, slight changes become important. The self-propulsion test combines the ship model with the model propeller. Uh, we install the model propeller behind the model ship, wherever it's supposed to go. We also put an electric motor and a dynamometer inside the ship model to measure the torque and the RPM. Uh, if the ship has multiple propellers, we do this for each individual propeller. And then the fun happens. The towing carriage tows the ship model down the towing tank at a fixed speed. During the test, the propeller increases speed. 
Uh, this might be a gradual increase or a series of fixed speeds. The procedure changes depending on the individual tank. At some point though, the important part happens. The propeller eventually produces sufficient thrust to eliminate all resistance force recorded by the towing carriage. Remember that the model is being towed by the carriage at this point, and it can record drag force from that model. Based on whenever this crossover point happens, and the measurements from the other sensors, that is the RPM and torque on the propeller and the velocity of the towing carriage, we can calculate changes in the propeller performance behind the ship. Uh, the technical terms for these changes in efficiency are commonly known as the wake fraction, the thrust deduction, and the relative rotative efficiency. But the important part is you combine that calm water performance test, you combine the open water pro propeller test, and now this self-propulsion test. And now you have all the data you need for the definitive and very accurate prediction of ship speed at full scale. Let's wrap this up. The towing tank is really a fundamental tool of ship design. Every student that studies ship design sees one and comes to love one. Where others might see just a giant bathtub, I see confidence, absolute confidence that the measurements will yield definitive predictions for speed and powering. That is what towing tanks represent. Thanks very much. I am Nick the Naval Architect. Engineers should be overpriced, inaccessible, boring. Boy, were they wrong. If you want to have an accessible engineer to work with, click that subscribe button to stay tuned for more videos. And did you know that as a professional engineer, I do more than just videos? Check out the website to find out what I can do to make your project easier.